Hello dear students, welcome to Maitri Academy. In this video, we will try to understand what is data sufficiency and how data sufficiency questions are given. First of all, what is the question pattern if you observe? Basically, data sufficiency, the name itself is indicating we have to check whether the given data is sufficient or not to solve the question. So you will be having a question followed by statement number one and statement number two. So what you need to do is you have to look at the statements. If you feel like statement number one is giving your answer choice, then you mark the answer as option A. One alone is sufficient for solving the question. And if you feel like only statement number two is giving your answer, then mark the answer as B, which is statement number two alone is sufficient for the solvation of the question. And if you feel like both the statements together is giving the answer, then mark the answer as C, which is both 1 and 2 together is required to solve the question. And if you are not able to solve the question, even merging the both the statements, then go for the answer D, which is both the statements together also not sufficient for solving the question. So this is a question pattern. So every question will be given in this way only. There is a question followed by statement 1 and 2 and you have the option choices as A, B, C, D. 1 alone, 2 alone, both together, both together also not sufficient. Those are A, B, C, D option choices. So these are the instructions they will be giving under every data sufficiency question. A question followed by the data in the form of two statements labeled as 1 as 2. You must decide whether the data given in the statements are sufficient to answer the question. Using the data, make an appropriate choice from 1 to 4. So one option A indicates statement 1 alone is sufficient. Option B indicates statement 2 alone is sufficient. Option C indicates both 1 and 2 together are sufficient. Option D indicates both 1 and 2 together also not sufficient. So let's look at what is the process of solvation of the question. So what is the method which we have to use? So I suggest you to solve the questions of data sufficiency using the elimination method. So what is elimination method? So as soon as you see the question, after you read the question, the question can be given in two patterns. One is double edge question, the other one is condition based question. So double edge question means what or how much like that the question is given. Or condition based question means is n is a prime number, is n is a odd number, something like that there will be a condition. And when you look at the question after reading the question, go with the statements. And when you are going with the statements, only one suggestion from my end is when you are reading the statements, read the statements individually. Don't read the complete question. So go with the individual statements. So first statement, read the first statement. And if you feel like first statement is correct, directly fix your answer as option A. And if you feel like first statement is wrong, then what do you do? You eliminate option A and go for the second statement. And if your second statement is correct, directly mark the answer as B. If the second statement is wrong, then eliminate option B, go for the merging of both one and two statements. So if you match one and two statements, A, if you are able to get the answer, then mark the answer as option C. Even after merging also, if you are not getting the answer, then go for the answer as option D. Both the statements together is not giving your answer choice. So this is a way and we'll look at some example questions so that you will get a clarity how to tackle the question using the elimination method. So if you observe this question, what is the value of A by B? Statement number one is given as 7A minus 8B is equal to zero. Statement number two is given as B is equal to four. How to tackle the question? So just observe, as I told you in the previous, after reading your question. So what is the value of A by B? So we need to find out A by B value. And look at the first statement. So when you are looking at the first statement, you are able to see that 7A minus 8B is equal to 0. 7A minus 8B is equal to 0 means we can clearly say that 7A is equal to 8B. And from this data, I can comfortably write A by B is equal to 8 by 7. That means I am able to figure out the A by B value required quantity using the statement number 1. That means you directly mark the answer as option A, eliminate the other things. If you look at this example question, what is the area of the circle? And we have statement 1 and 2. As I told you in the previous, as soon as you read the question, you look at the statements and look at the statements individually. So they are given that statement number 1 is telling circle passes through 0, 0 and 0, 2. That means here they given that circle is passing through two points, one point is 0, 0, the other point is 0, 2. So using this, can we say the area? No. Because to find out the area, area of a circle formula is pi r square. 
that means to find out the area what is the quantity required radius is required so without knowing the radius by using these two points i cannot figure out the radius so statement number one is not giving that as i told you if statement number one is not giving the answer immediately eliminate option a and look at the second statement and don't carry the first statement information to the second statement and in the second statement, they mentioned that the circle is fully inscribed in a square of side length h. So circle is inscribed in a square. So there is a square which is having 8 centimeter. So circle is inscribed in this square like this. If the circle is inscribed in this square, what will be the radius? So because this value is 8, this value is also 8, radius will be 4. So once you are able to get the radius, finding the area is not a challenging. That means I understand that statement number 2 is giving the answer. If statement number is 2 is giving the answer, mark the answer as B, eliminate the other things. Okay. Hope you are able to understand. Let's look at the next question. What is the percentage profit on the sale of 50 books? Percentage profit. To find out percentage profit, what is required? So percentage profit, to get the percentage profit, we have to know what is the prof profit value, what is the cost price value. So this will indicate the percentage profit. So to get the profit value, what is required? Profit is nothing but selling price minus cost price. These two terms are required to get the profit. So let's look at the statements individually. Let's look at the first statement. The cost price of the each book is 100. So in the first statement, I only know the cost price. So using this cost price, can you get the percentage profit? Definitely no. That means statement number one is wrong. Eliminate option A. And look at the second statement. The sales price of each book is 125. So in the second statement, we have only the selling price. By knowing only selling price, will you able to get the answer choice of percentage profit? Definitely no. That means I realize statement number two is wrong. Eliminate option B. And now what you need to do is just merge these two statements together and decide whether you are able to get the answer or not. So in the first statement, we have a cost price. In the second statement, we have a selling price. Using this, you can definitely get the what is the profit value and what is the percentage profit for each and every book you can easily get. And they are asking you to find out what is the percentage for 50 books. You can definitely able to get the answer if you match these two statements. So you mark the answer as option C. C indicates both 1 and 2 together is sufficient for answering your question. Let's look at the other question. What is the speed of the train? The train crosses a signal pole in 15 seconds and train crosses another train coming in the opposite direction in 10 seconds. So if you observe this question, what is the speed of the train? So we need to find out the speed of the train. How to get the speed? Speed is given as distance travel in a specific duration of time. So distance by time will be giving a speed. So to get this, let's look at the statement number one. A train crosses a signal pole in 15 seconds. And in this data, we are able to see the time taken to cross a signal pole is 15 seconds. Using only time, will you be able to get the speed? No, we need to know the distance. That means we need to know the length of the train. But length of the train is not given in the statement number one. That means statement number one is not giving your answer, eliminate option A. And look at the statement number two individually. The train crossing another train coming in the opposite direction in 10 seconds. So here also they just mentioned only the time. So by knowing only the time, I cannot find out the speed because I need the distance also. So statement number two is also wrong, eliminate option B. And now what you do, merge these two statements. Even merging these two statements also not giving the answer, eliminate option C, mark the answer as D. Like that you have to solve the questions. So now, if you look at what are the type of questions. So as I told you in the starting of the session, you will be getting data sufficiency questions in two types. One is double H type question. That means they will be asking what is the area, what is the perimeter, or how many persons are there in the auditorium, something like that, there will be double H questions. So this is one type. So that means the question will be given like this. What is the cost price of the article? So what, it started with what? So to get the cost price, so look at the statement number one. The selling price of the article is 50. By knowing the selling price, will you get the cost price? No. Statement number one is wrong. Eliminate option A. And the profit is 10 percentage. By knowing the profit, will you get the cost price? Definitely, we cannot get the cost price. Eliminate option B. And now, if you look at merging these two statements, selling price is 50, profit is 10 percentage. That means 10 percentage profit means one ten percentage of the cost price is 50 rupees. They are asking only cost price. So we can easily find out what is the cost price. One ten percentage of the cost price is 50 means only cost price we can get 50 by one ten percentage. We can further simplify and get the value of cost price. So and understand we are dealing with data sufficiency. 
you no need to solve the complete question you need to check whether the statements are sufficient to answer the question or not that's it you no need to do calculation so both the statements together is giving your answer mark your answer choices option c this is double h type question and we can also see the questions which are called yes or no type questions that means this questions basically starts with a suffix of is so is the positive integer x is odd is a question and look at what is a given statement number 1 so in the statement number 1 they mention that x square is even x square is even means what is the meaning of this so if x is a even number x square will be definitely even so if you look at 2 square 4 and 4 square 16 and 6 square 36 any even number square will be equal to even any odd number square will be equal to odd so x is e x square is even means definitely x will be even number in the statement number 1 if x is even number will you able to answer yes is a positive integer x is odd yes we can say it is not odd it is even so we are able to say the answer from the statement number 1 so you can say either yes or no so not definitely yes here no it's not an odd number it's a even number we are able to say some answer exact predictable answer so using the statement number one so you mark the answer as option a here so that's how you have to solve the questions which are related to data sufficiency thank you so much